Hey everyone. It has not snowed enough this year to actually use a snowblower. Even though we've got like 10 inches so far this season. It usually comes in just a few inches and it melts. Unless we get more than 6 inches, I don't even bother clearing the snow. I just drive right through it and pack it down. So this machine right here is my good old reliable snowblower. And... This year I brought it to the shop to see if it was worth fixing it or not. So the guy charged me not that much. He only charged me $20 to pick it up since this doesn't fit in my car. And this thing's also too heavy for me to feasibly get in the car. I did it the first time I ever had to move it, but it's a pain in the butt. You have to remove the handlebars, you have to remove this to even get it to fit, because I drive a tiny SUV. But this machine... It did really well, and I'm not going to throw it away. I did replace it this year, but I'm not throwing it away. So the guy brought it back to his shop. He did a whole bunch of tests on it, and he told me if I wanted to proceed, he would charge $800. So the $800 would fix all the engine problems it's been having. I wanted to give this machine a shot. And now that I know what it's going to take to repair it, I might do it in a few years when I'm comfortable with the money to do so. Very, very heavy steel compared to the newer one I'm going to show you. That's what I love about this. Except one thing, when I just had to bring it into the shed, I had to actually start the engine just to get it up this ramp. Since this thing here weighs 300 something pounds, the new one is very light and thin metal. So this machine is a... 1984 snapper. So the 800 bucks the guy was going to charge me was to fix the headlights. The headlights have never worked since I've owned it. I hooked them up. As soon as I go to click them on, the engine immediately stalls. Because I think they're drawing too much power. Also, check out this machine compared to the newer one. This one, you have to unscrew this anytime you want to change the angle of where it's throwing it. And also, to get this whole thing to turn, it's this right here. Look how slow that moves. The new one is very quick to do that. This one, the engine is much louder. The guy was also going to fix the starter. It works, but it's not engaging properly. Years ago, when I first got this, the muffler is all rusty because it would ch it would turn cherry red. It had a valve issue, so I had to do a valve job on it, meaning taking all this off, taking the engine head off, grinding the valves, putting compound in there, grinding them to make sure they're seated properly, doing proper gapping of the valves on the bottom. But he thinks it's going to need some new piston rings to get it to run correctly, and a new carburetor. All that work and replacing the tires because he said these are lawn tractor tires. He doesn't know who put them on. They work, but they're actually very dry rotted. They were probably put on it like 20 years ago. So I never pump them up to the PSI, they say, just enough to get it off the ground because I'm kind of afraid of them exploding since they are dry rotted a lot and they have a slow leak. So doing all those things I just mentioned, he would charge me 800 bucks. I did not think that was worth it this year because he said the 800 bucks is to try to fix it. Since until they actually get into the job, they're not sure exactly what they're doing. But this thing still starts fairly easily. Today it's only 10 degrees Fahrenheit, so this thing was a pain in the butt to get started. I had to pull it so many times to eventually get it to turn over. But if it's a good day where it's like 30 degrees out, a warmer snowstorm, this thing usually starts up on its first pull. These bigger machines, and I was surprised to find out the newer one actually has it too. They have fittings for a grease gun on there, which I was surprised the newer one had. See, very, very strong blades, very strong body. This thing, I, I've I actually stood on it countless times to use it as a step stool. Very thick metal on these. Let me go show you the newer one I just got. So this one here, this is a 30 inch one. The new one is 2 inches smaller. And this one is a... Uh, the guy told me it's 10 horsepower. The new one is 15 horsepower.
All right, here's the new one. Now, I will do a proper review on this after one year, after I've actually used it and stuff. You can tell the engine on this one is a lot bigger than the other one. You know, this year, I was actually going to try to give a electric snowblower a chance. But as soon as I went into this guy's shop, because I go to him a lot, I've seen him. He sold electric Husqvarna snowblowers last year. He said he's never selling them again. Because he had too many people return them broken, and the company refused to sell. The company refused to refund him the money because he had to refund some of the customers for the machine breaking down because they were under a warranty. Husqvarna would not give him his money back, so he said he's never selling electric machines from them again. And I have this tiny one here. He brought this one to the shop with that other giant one while figuring out. He only charged me 30 bucks to get this thing working. The only thing he had to do was he replaced the pull cord because the pull cord, I broke off it a couple months ago. This one I actually found on the side of the road for free. Works perfect, but it's tiny. Even today in 10 degree weather, this thing started on first pull. And the guy was nice. Look at this. That's a new spark plug. This must be the old one hanging here. He gave me a free spark plug. Didn't even ask him to. And... He also did an oil change on it, which I didn't ask him to. So that's really nice. 30 bucks for this thing. That's all he charged. Didn't charge me for the oil change or that. That's pretty nice. Now here's the big machine. So instead of 800 bucks, I decided to go for this one, which was... Uh, I think it was... I paid 1400 for this. This one's made by Aaron's. I was actually going to get the Husqvarna one until the guy talked me out of it. The Husqvarna one had more bells and whistles... And this one, because I talked to him why I wanted to fix the big one. I was telling him because it's heavy duty, heavy metal and stuff. And this one, metal's not that bad, actually. It's actually pretty nice. But when I went in, I banged on the Husqvarna one he had. It was pretty thin. He said that I, the Husqvarna one had power steering and stuff. This one does not. He said unless you're very weak or very old... It's not really a big deal, because this thing, you can spin this thing around very freely. I'm not having any problem with it, because this machine is like half the weight of the other one. It's very light. It's got the electric starter. It's also got, look at this, I am not used to this at all. I showed you on that other machine how I have to unscrew a bolt to get this thing to move. Now there's a handle here for it, and it really easily just... Yep. Now, that is one thing that... That's one extra thing that could go wrong, this whole cable and stuff. If it breaks in warranty, I'll get it fixed. If it breaks out of warranty, chances are I'm going to put my own wing nut on there, like the old-fashioned one, because it's probably not worth my money even getting that fixed, unless it's pretty cheap. Who knows what the cable could cost. I've replaced the cable on that lawnmower down there twice since owning it. I got a knockoff one from eBay. Only costs, like... 30 bucks. That was worth it. And look at this. Look how fast that thing spins around. The older one, you have to spin it probably four times as much to get it to do that. I thought that was pretty cool. Comes with two extra shear pins. It comes with a little shovel in case you clog up the auger. I'm still going to do what I usually do. I usually have a toilet cleaning brush I use for getting every bit of snow out of it because if you park it in the garage it's going to get water all over the ground and start rusting tools in here through humidity if it also melts a little bit on a warm day and then freezes it could make the impeller and stuff not work yeah you see this is much thinner than the old 1980s one but it's still pretty good look at this it's machine still has grease fittings I was surprised that a machine this new would have it but this is more of a commercial machine he said a contractor would use compared to the, the really small ones they had yeah see this here the first time I go to use it I'm going to loosen these bolts and I want to put the ski up all the way so it's leaving about an inch on the ground because I have a gravel driveway and it's going to try picking that up. Today when I was testing it, it threw quite a few rocks. I just had gravel delivered about a year ago and it hasn't been packed down enough yet. Because I could have bought normal 
what people put on their dirt driveways, which is three-quarter inch gravel mixed with sand and stuff, you know, so it's very flat. It packs really easily. But I did this for drainage. I always have water trickling down the driveway from the high water table, so I just got three-quarter inch stone, and that'll take quite a few years to pack down. But it, this won't pick up anything once I adjust the skis on it. It's got a headlight that's always running. Pretty easy to start it here. Key. This one you actually have to use the key. The old the old snow blower you actually had a throttle. When you want to shut it off, you push the throttle all the way down. This one the key has to be on in the on position when you go ahead and prime it. This has to be over here towards start. This right here is the RPM. You turn it way up when you're ready to do stuff, back down to idle. Right here, this is to shut the gas off, because there's a valve inside here for the gas tank. I'm just going to go ahead and leave it on. Not a big deal. So now, if I go ahead and put this on the on position, which is sideways, and I pull this after priming it, it should start right up. Then you got to turn the key to shut it off, which is new. The older machine doesn't have that. And this machine, compared to the old one, I don't even think I have to wear earplugs on it, because... It's got a giant muffler. It's actually really quiet when it runs. And so is this one. This is really quiet, too. I'm not sure how old this one is. I'm thinking this is also 80s, maybe early 90s. Both very quiet compared to that 1984. Another thing that is kind of cool with this thing is, because I've had problems with that other one. That other one, I've had to touch the controls, and I briefly shut off the impeller which makes the machine push it for a few feet before I turn it back on just so I can switch something. This one's kind of cool because you push this down, then you push the other one down, which is the wheels to get them to start moving. Then you can let off on this one because if that one's pushed down, this one stays down. You let off on that, and this one flicks back up. That was kind of cool. It says the fuel you can't use. You can't use 85 but I, I'm guessing you probably could use 87. All my machines, I use 91 ethanol-free. Ethanol can mess up some of these tiny machines. The biggest issue with the ethanol is it causes buildup. If you leave fuel in it or fuel in the carburetor bowl for extended amounts of time, it can actually create buildup of... I don't know what the word for it is. I, I'm trying to think of it. There's a certain name... When I first got this snowblower and when I got that generator there that wouldn't start, I had to clean the carburetor vigorously to get that debris off it. Because as fuel dries up, it leaves this nasty coating behind. Supposedly ethanol-free doesn't do that, so you can leave the machine more often. So I think this machine will be a good solution. That other one, I didn't really trust it because of its carburetor problem. It would randomly rev out of control, and I was afraid it would blow a rod and smash through the side of the engine. And it, if I ever needed that machine to be trustworthy, it just wouldn't work out very well until I had those things done. And plus, it's aging. That thing is 40 years old. Who knows what could go wrong with it? Occasionally, I plan on bringing this with me to help on jobs as soon as I get a newer vehicle that this will actually fit in. This machine is so light. It won't be a problem getting it into the back of a car at all to go and help out with snow removal. So this is what it's called. You see the models of the series? This is the one on the bottom. This is the Deluxe 28 SHO. It was about $1,500, I believe. Yep, they did not have the 30-inch one, which I probably would have got. But this is fine, 28 inches. I have a driveway that's about 200 feet. To get a vehicle down it, all I have to do is bring this to the end of the driveway twice, and it makes a trail wide enough for a car to pass. I do it three times for to make the driveway nice and comfortable. So the guy told me when I asked, how long is this machine supposed to last? He thinks I'll get 10 years out of it. But I take care of my machines really well. That old machine, I haven't done in maybe four years, but I used to actually wax it every year. You know, car wax all the metal to prevent it from rusting and corroding. Because he said the guy from the power supply place 
when he came to drop this thing off with the other two. He told me the biggest thing that kills these machines is snow blowing the edge of the salty road or the end of your driveway. Because that's usually the last place people go to snow blow. Then the machine is covered in salty snow and then people park it. And that's what causes it to rust out. Forever, when I'm done with the end of a driveway, I purposely save some spots on my way back so I can ha run clean snow through it. And then I make sure as much snow as possible is out of it with a toilet brush, which I have found really good to scrub it off all the moving parts. So I'll do a review on this thing after one year of testing it, see how it works. When I asked the guy why it was much quieter than the other one, he said it, well, like I said, it has a much bigger muffler, and he also said that it it's running a little more lean, maybe, for emissions or something. But he said the sole purpose of what de determines on how long this will last is how well you take care of it. He said most people 10 years because they don't do any of that preventative maintenance. They just put it right away with whatever salt might be on it. This guy today, I bought this two weeks ago, and he said he would have brought it right over the day I bought it, but he insisted on waiting a couple weeks. It was totally up to me. Finally brought it over today after two weeks because he brought it over on a flatbed trailer. He didn't want to bring it over when the road is wet, when the road is white, covered in salt, because it would get all over the machines. I'm guessing this one he left outside at his shop, maybe, because there's like a thick residue of what looks like salt on that one, but the new one doesn't have it at all. The other big machine also has that small residue. I should probably wipe off it. One thing that I don't like about this machine, the metal, is this right here. This is a metal chute. The other one had a plastic chute. Maybe not original. I, don't, I really don't know. But this metal chute, it rattles around like crazy. Because this, this is really thin metal compared to this. This thing makes a whole bunch of noise. Not even using it. Just it idling. This is shaking like crazy. Making a huge commotion. But I think it'll be a good machine. One thing I am also going to have to do, the guy told me, he said it does not come with this part. Who knows why it doesn't come with this part? See this little piece of pipe so you can do an oil change yourself? You unscrew this and you put a pan underneath it. Usually you remove the tire, which is just this one pin, put a pin pan under it. Or if you're like me, I just put a, a cheap pie tin under here. Shape it so it gets it over here. And then I put a pot to put it in and I put the other wheel up on a brick with the machine crooked the newer machine doesn't come with that this is where it is you have to buy a little pipe to make that yourself which I'm going to do when I do an oil change this has new oil in it so it's also a new engine so maybe I should do it after the first oil change do a break in oil change because the first run it's going to wear and tear a little more than normal because it has to break itself in. Then I should do an oil change maybe after the first heavy run with the machine. I'm hoping for a big snowstorm to give this a test. I don't know if it's going to happen. This year has been a lot warmer than normal. Something I could not believe today, because I, I always do this maintenance myself on it, the oil change. The only reason I've never really changed the oil in my car is because... It's a lot cheaper, to actually, to go to the shop I go to because the guy orders it in such bulk. He only charges 40 bucks for the oil change. If I was to go and buy enough synthetic oil, I'm just about the same. But now that things have changed, I'm going to start doing my own oil changes because prices are way up suddenly on doing that kind of work. And one thing that shocks me, most people, when they buy a machine, for some reason... And I've known people personally, I always find free machines on the side of the road, lawnmower, this, both free. That big snowblower actually was free too, 10 years ago. People assume that these things don't take oil for some reason. I've literally had people tell me that. They didn't know they're supposed to change the oil. You're supposed to change the oil in these things every single year. 
the oil change that this guy put in here, I didn't even know it was a thing. He said the oil has zinc in it, which helps it stick to the metal moving parts so it can lubricate more. It helps stick to it. The only reason cars don't have that, he said, is because it would clog up the catalytic converter, which these things do not have. Today on the radio, I couldn't believe what they said. They said it on the, on the radio, 85% of Americans don't know how to change a tire. I could not believe that. I carry plug kits, a full-size spare, and a donut. I know how to change those, even though I've done it only three times. It's pretty easy. They also said that I think like 40% of Americans don't even know how to open the hood of their car. They don't know how to check the oil. That 40% doesn't know how to top off your windshield wiper reserve. That's People like that are the reason why some new cars don't even come with a spare, not even a donut. And it's getting rare these days to find a vehicle that's not a truck that actually has a full-size full spare. People are getting stupider. They don't learn how to work on their machines anymore. I was taught at a young age to keep my machines in top-notch condition by my dad. See that? I have a video on this thing here. I bought a generator just in case the power ever went out. That was before I converted the house to burn wood only. Anyways, I was going to use this to backfeed into my oil-burning furnace in case there was a power outage so I could heat the house. No longer necessary since I'm heating with wood. Really no need for this thing at all unless I'm using it on a job site where there's no power. This thing works pretty well. I did an oil change on it. I had to fix the carburetor. It was all messed up. It runs pretty well now. This was at a tag sale for 150 bucks. I believe it was 150 bucks. The lady at the tag sale says the more times you pull that thing and it doesn't start, the cheaper it'll get. I ended up getting it for it was either 50 or 70 bucks. I'm not sure. I'd have to watch that video and confirm. This thing was so corroded, it looked like someone let fuel sit in it for like 10 years. I poured out the gasoline, and it was bright brown, like a brownish red. It didn't even look like gas, it looked like something else. It smelled horrible, that's why it wasn't starting. That also corroded the carburetor, I had to take that apart, clean every little piece individually with carb cleaner. And then after that, I finally got it going. It doesn't run as well as it could. Something is wrong every now and then. You hear a little pop. But it stays running. It produces power. The alternator works. That was worth it. Even though it's not exactly the best, it'll still work. That's made by Coleman, which technically, I believe, is made in China. It's also made by Tecumseh, which is a company that went out of business. The engine is a Tecumseh. Company went out of business about 10 years ago. There's plenty of aftermarket parts, but you can't get the genuine ones anymore. That was another problem they said they were going to have to run into with that older snowblower. That is a Tecumseh, and they don't make that anymore.